Well, hey, New Life Church, Matt Mosler back with you to share another passage in which Jesus is encouraging us not to keep our faith to ourselves, but to let it overflow from within us to everybody else around us, all right? And the passage that we're looking at today is going to be the first one. We're actually looking at two. The first one is Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. And here's what it is. It says, Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moth and rust don't destroy, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Now, as you can see, Jesus did not go into a great deal of detail in this passage describing what he means by laying up your treasure. But if you back up and notice how he begins this discourse in uh, chapter 6 by talking about practicing your righteousness for your own benefit, we can kind of get a pretty good idea of what he's talking about. Jesus defines what he means by righteousness back in verse 2 when he talks about how we should give, how charitable we should be. And then he gives you a second pillar of righteousness in verse 5 when he talks about how we pray, how we talk to God. And the final leg of this righteousness stool is in verse 16 when he illustrates how we are supposed to fast. And as Pastor Mark has explained to us very well, that has more to do with repentance and humility than dieting. Although, as you can see, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to fast a bit more often than I do. All of this leads up to verse 19, where Jesus instructs us about what we're supposed to do with our treasure. Now, before I get to our second passage in Luke, uh, in which Dr. Luke expands on this concept, let me pause here for just a second to talk for just a little bit about what exactly is our treasure. The Bible says in Psalm 50, verse 10, that it is God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Now, what that means is that God owns everything, as we say in Pine Bluff. He owns the cattle, he owns the grass, he owns the dirt, he owns the bugs, he owns everything. And Paul says in Romans 11, 36, that all that we have and all that we are comes from him and through him and to him. So in other words, we're just borrowing all of this stuff for the time being. We cannot take it with us. You don't see a hearse pulling a U-Haul. But let me show you something that I think is pretty cool about our Heavenly Father and his heart toward us, his children. In writing to the church at Philippi, the Apostle Paul was trying to encourage that church to be more generous with their stuff. And he writes this in verse 17. This is, this is cool. Watch this. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. <laughs> what? The profit that increases to your account. Did you know that you have an account with God? When was the last time you checked that balance? And did you know that God actually wants to make a deposit into your account? Y'all, we need to get this, okay? So let's go back to what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 6. In that passage, from the very first verse, he says this, Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. In other words, you don't practice your generosity to be honored or repaid, but there is a reward for your generosity. And Jesus goes on to mention the word reward or repay at least seven times throughout that chapter. Chapter six, culminating in chapter six, verse 33, where he says, if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, meaning your giving and your charity, all of these things will be added unto you. Listen, giving and sharing and doing for others is one of the most important ways that we can demonstrate our faith and trust in God. And when we are generous with our stuff, other people notice. And then you have an opportunity, after you have ministered to their physical needs, to open the door to minister to their spiritual needs. And that's exactly what Dr. Luke is saying in the next passage, chapter 12, verses 33 and 34. He says, sell your possessions and give to charity. Make yourselves money belts which don't wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes nor uh, where no thief comes near nor moth destroys for where your treasure is that's where your heart's going to be. It's not that God doesn't want us to have stuff because frankly I like my stuff. But if my heart is wrapped up in my stuff, if I'm hogging what God has given me rather than using it everything that I have to impact and expand his kingdom through my charity, then not only am I robbing God, 
but I'm cheating myself out of the real treasure of life that he has prepared for me. Amen? God bless you. Okay, I love this vision, the life of Christ. I'll never forget, I took the life of Christ in Bible college and it changed everything that I thought about. It's like the Jesus style of the word. We all need it and I thank you for joining us. Please do not forget to subscribe so you can really partner with us as we move through this over the next several weeks together as a church. We're growing. Let's keep it going. Don't forget to subscribe.